this is Marcos Patchett for the Academy of Astrology. Um, hopefully you've seen the other two videos in this little series which is about the Ascendant. Um, last week or the week before uh, Rod talked about what the Ascendant means in astrology and uh, Sue has also done a video about uh, the astrological Ascendant and the signs on the Ascendant and the ruler of the Ascendant. So if you haven't seen those videos go and check those two out. Today I'm just going to be talking about the traditional meanings of the Ascendant in astrology. As you know, the Ascendant is the sign that's rising on the eastern horizon. So a chart, we tend to think about astrological charts as being birth charts, the charts of humans. But charts can obviously be for anything. You can have a chart for when a toaster's plugged in, or a chart, not that you do that chart, but you can have a chart for a hospital being opened, or a country being founded, or pretty much anything. Anything that has a start time will have a chart. Anything in reality will have a chart. So the Ascendant will always represent in that chart um, something about the nature of that thing and particularly how it came into being. It will represent the body of a thing. So the chart for a country, for example when a treaty is signed, uh, would represent the people of that country, something about the people who make up that country. Um, the chart for a, a, an object, like say the first uh, car of a particular line of cars that comes off the manufacturing line, uh, the chart for that make of car, the ascendant of that chart would represent something about the shape and design of that car. Um, so the traditional values that were ascribed to signs were like little labels that were used to describe something about the functionality, the appearance and the nature of that thing, whether it be a characteristic like a personal characteristic, like a, a feature of one's personality, or whether it be a literal description of its shape or appearance or behaviour in some way. So to give you some examples, the water signs, which traditionally were Cancer, Scorpio and Pisces, were all described as mute, that means not speaking. Uh, and the air signs, that's Libra, Aquarius and Gemini, were all described as having voices. And of those two, Gemini and Libra were loud voiced. That might mean if you had those signs rising, if a person had those signs rising in their birth chart, if they have a water sun rising, it doesn't necessarily mean they're going to be mute or not talk. I am talking to you now and I have a Scorpio rising, so clearly that's not the case. But it does mean that the person might be a little bit more reticent, a little bit left to their own devices, a little bit more introverted, and may not communicate everything uh, quite so directly as somebody who might say have a Gemini rising, who is often very extrovert, very communicative. You stick them in a party and they'll chat to everyone straight away. Um, to give you some more labels, traditional labels for signs, we've got some of the signs, uh, as I said, were powerful or loud voice. So those be Gemini, Libra and Virgo. Gemini and Virgo being the two signs traditionally said to be ruled by Mercury, the planet of communication. Some signs were described as libidinous, that means very strongly desiring things. And those would be um, Aries, Taurus and Capricorn. So if those signs were rising, the people, if they were represented by, if they represented people, if the chart was the chart of a person, would very strongly desire things uh, in different ways. Aries, for example, would just desire to win. Taurus rising people generally like cake, comfort, and all the pleasant things in life. And Capricorn rising, they like to rise to the top of their profession. They like to be professionally on top, but they they all have strong desire natures. Um, Angry signs. Some signs were angry and those are the signs where Mars, the planet Mars, was, was strongly associated with them. They would be Aries, Scorpio and Capricorn. So if somebody has those signs rising, don't piss them off. And the corrupt signs would be Scorpio and Capricorn. Corrupt in this sense could mean corrupt like a dodgy politician or could mean prone to vices. These are signs that get themselves into trouble doesn't mean everyone with Scorpio or Capricorn rising is going to be corrupt and therefore not trustworthy. It may mean that they tend to, as I say, get themselves into trouble. They can get themselves into, into corners because they something about their nature inclines them to do that. Now, controversially, some signs traditionally were associated with lying. They were the two Mercury ruled signs, which were Gemini and Virgo, and also the sign of Scorpio. And they all might tell lies for different reasons. The Gemini rising signs, uh, they, Gemini is a Mercury rule sign and it's an air sign, it's very playful. So they would tell lies just because it was funny, because it was a laugh, because why not, because you can have a, have a joke with it. Uh, Virgo rising might tell lies because 
it's about, as Winston Churchill said, lies, damn lies and statistics. They like to, they like everything to be ordered and properly arranged. So even if it doesn't exactly seem true, if it fits into the right box, then they'll kind of make it true. So Virgo will kind of tidy things up so they look right. In science, it's called the file drawer effect. You publish the one study which gives the result you want, you put the other 99 in the drawer. And then Scorpio might tell a lie because it's a strongly emotional fixed sign and it wants what it wants, so it'll almost make itself believe the lie in order to get what it wants. However, these signs, the same three signs, were also described traditionally as being generous of soul. And I suspect that, again, is all for different motives. So Gemini might be generous of soul because Geminis like to be playful. They like to keep things light, so they'll try and raise the mood in a room. Virgo is generous of soul because Virgo likes to be of service. So it'll always try to make things right for people. And Scorpio is generous of soul because it's the sign most associated with emotional pain. It can't stand pain in itself or others, so it will try to remove the pain. And in that case, in, in this sense, there's always a balance in astrology. Nothing is completely light or dark. Um, the other sign that was generous of soul was uh, traditionally was Libra. Libra is an air sign that likes balance. It likes to keep things sort of on an even keel, keep people happy. So, so those are some of the traditional uh, labels attached to the signs. They're also signs that were beautiful of face, traditionally, allegedly. They would be a Gemini, Virgo, Libra and Scorpio again. Um, there are a few more uh, attributes. Some signs were described as barren, and those would be Gemini, Virgo, and Leo. And that could mean, um, if you, in, in a chart for a question, for example, because in astrology, sometimes you could ask a question and do a chart for when that question was asked. If you find the significators in barren signs, if you're asking about will this person produce a play, for example, they might not produce anything because it's in a sign which is barren. Or if you're asking a question about conception or fertility in traditional astrology that was done, then maybe not might be the answer. You'd have to weigh up the whole chart though because there's a whole bunch more factors that would go into that. Finally, there were some very specific masteries that were described for some of the signs. So. Uh, Rod and Sue both mentioned Donald Trump's chart. Obviously, he's very much uh, in the news at the moment. Uh, Leo rising. Now, Leo's mastery traditionally was described as cleverness, slyness and deceit and uh, a sign which had many cares and sadnesses. Now, we all think of Leo as being very flamboyant. It's the lion, as Sue described, the lion with the mane, the performer, the showman. It, but being the king has a cost. And that cost is often that one feels quite alone. You have to be strategic. You have to be, you have to be on your game. And it carries a weight of sadness with it because you can't share everything with everyone if you're the king. Um, and so that's an interesting mastery. Other ones you have, uh, Sagittarius was also described as a master of stratagem, strategies. Um, Capricorn was another master of stratagem and Scorpio was master of cares or sadnesses. So, these signs had particular, so the strategic signs were Sagittarius and Leo. Uh, Capricorn was also a strategic sign, although not a fire sign, it'd be much more methodical. And Scorpio was a sign which had mastery over the emotional domain. There are lots of other little attributes that you'll find in the traditional literature, and mostly these were used in answering specific questions. Um, as I've already said. So, and a final example, again referring to Donald, Trump, Donald Trump's chart. He has the Leo rising, which is a master of strategy and a lot of cares and whatever. And as Sue described, Leo being a fire sign, it's very, it's very bold and sort of like, it likes the look of itself and the sound of itself and it likes being in the limelight. And the ruler, his chart ruler, would be the sun in Gemini. Gemini, as I've already described, is a loud voiced sign. It's also sometimes described as generous of soul, but it's also prone to lying. So you have somebody who is strategic, who is uh, probably a little bit more prone to sadness or cares than he might otherwise be, and somebody who might lie or might be quite generous. And these are really, really basic. There are loads more intricate, involved ways of interpreting a chart. But even just looking at these very basic sign labels and descriptions in traditional astrology, you can begin to get some information.
So anyway, that's it for me. I've been talking for too long probably already. So um, if you like this video, please subscribe to this channel. Um, if you're interested in uh, looking at our course, please email us. Um, also find us on Facebook. We've got a Facebook page. So thank you for watching.